Hello and welcome to the new multiple victim series. As far as shark attacks, we are going to go over uh, shark attacks where multiple victims were injured, uh, either by the same shark or by different sharks, and usually by beaches. We're, we're not going to go over big, large shipwrecks, but we might go over boating wrecks like uh, Ray Boundy with his boat. Um, we might go over like uh, Billy Horn and his family that were stranded when their boat went under. So we're going to have a new series and this is going to go over the multiple victims that are actually injured so that we can know how many times and what circumstances led to this. And we're going to start out with Norman Gervin and Jack Brinkley. Stick around. On Wednesday, October 27th of 1937, Norman Gervin, Joe Doniger, Gordon Doniger, and Jack Brinkley all were at Kira Beach, which is in Queensland, Australia. The four of them were doing some body surfing. They were actually lifesavers. They were with the Life Saving Club, and it was 5.30 in the evening, and they were out doing some body surfing where you just ride the waves in. You'd swim out and you ride the waves in. Norman Gervin is 100 yards from shore. And suddenly the two friends hear that he's struggling with a shark. I believe it was Joe Doniger looked over and saw that Norman Gervin was struggling with the shark. So him and Jack Brinkley started swimming over and Joe Doniger actually touched uh, the wounded arm of Jack of Norman Gervin and he let it go. He didn't want to pull his arm off. It was just hanging on by a little bit. So he let him go and now Jack Brinkley and, and Joe Doniger, they start swimming into shore as fast as they can. They just figured there's nothing they're going to be able to do for Norman and they're swimming in. They're going to get help. Norman Gervin's already been attacked brutally out there a hundred yards out. Now Jack Brinkley is 75 yards out now, so he's made up 25 yards heading to shore, and he is in the lead. So this shark must have passed up Joe Doniger to go up to Jack Brinkley, and now Jack Brinkley is screaming for help, and Joe Doniger's got to go over and help him because he says, screams out, help me, for God's sakes, help me, and then he collapses in the water. So Joe Doniger goes out and gets him and gets him into the shore. He ends up with bite, bite mark to the shoulder, I believe it is, and to the arm, and I believe another bite to the leg. He had multiple bites to his body. Once they get Brinkley in, they still have to go out and get Gervin's body. So a gentleman on a surf ski paddles out there and he gets out just past the breakers and he can see the shark still circling. So this shark is pretty big. It's circling a blood stain in the water. So the guy on the surf ski, he returns. They go get a boat and now they return in a boat and they're looking around and they can't find the shark. Uh, they do recover parts of Gervin's body though. Then a shark is caught a couple days later, 11 and a half feet. It has a hand in there that matches Gervin because it has a tattoo on the hand. Also, other body parts are on there. Um, his arm was severed in the first attack, and that's when that when uh, Joe Doniger didn't want to pull on the arm and pull it off. So either him or Brinkley, I, I, it might have been Brinkley that tried to help him out like that. But both of them struck for shore, and that's when they were attacked. There's other versions of this, again, probably taken from a book. It looks like Victor Coppelson's book, um, where there's a lot of details that there's not in the newspaper articles. So everything we're going to go with is that. Um, Gordon Doniger did think, or Joe Doniger did think, that the shark was two different sharks that did the attacking. So we'll never know whether it was actually one shark or two sharks that attacked him. Um, either way, you know, for the shark to be at Norman Gervin, 100 yards out, and attacked him there, viciously attacked him, shaking him around, um, and then swim over 25 yards, chase down Jack Brinkley and bite his arm, almost severing his shoulder. and doing damage to his leg where he passes away. They had to amputate the leg, but he ended up passing away from his wounds too. So this is a double fatality. And I would say most likely by the same shark, the same 
11 and a half foot shark. Nothing was removed as far as, you know, limbs from Brinkley, so they didn't recover anything there. But like I said, this is a double fatality, and it sounds like by the same 11 and a half foot tiger shark over there at Cura Beach in Queensland, Australia, one of, one of the worst uh, double attacks, whether by one shark or two sharks, um, that we'll hear of. Like I said, we won't know whether it was one or two sharks. I would say that it's probably one shark. Maybe I did chase them down and then went back over to Gervin's body and decided to play territorial with that and hang on to the body as much as it could. Uh, but when they got out there to look for it in the boat, they could not find the shark at all. So 11 and a half foot tiger shark that went ahead and, and bit both Norman Gervin and Jack Brinkley goes down as an attack. One attempt to predate, one non-attempt to predate, and two fatalities. And that's the story of Jack Brinkley and Norman Gervin.